Robert Scoble, and I'm the startup liaison officer for Rackspace. I get around and talk to startups, and we're certainly doing that here at TechCrunch Disrupt 2012. Uh, and let's just go into it. Uh, we're meeting one of the winner, winners of the New York uh, TechCrunch Disrupt. Welcome, and who are you? Craig Walker, uh, CEO of Uber Conference. And what is Uber Conference? Okay, so uh, what we try to solve is the pain of audio conferencing. So, you know, what are the biggest pains you have with an audio conference? Dialing in and having to enter an eight-digit pin followed by the pound key, which is really difficult when you're driving. Yep. Um, getting on the call and not knowing who's there and having to go through the awkward, hey, did someone just join? You know, who's there? And go through the introductions. Um, and then finally, not knowing who's on the or who's actually speaking, because you finally figure out who's on the call, yep. but it's impossible to tell who's talking. You know, was that the CEO or was that the intern? And it's just like audio conferencing just pretty much sucks because it hasn't improved much. It's true, and I'm and always on an uh, audio conference as well. I'm driving. Yeah, exactly. Because that's the only time I have to do it. <laughs> exactly. And like there's, you know, there's been a lot of innovation in video conferencing, yeah. which is a very hard problem as well, but that innovation in audio conferencing hasn't done anything. So with Uber Conference, and if you can see on the screen, we give you a visual interface to the conference call. So here I am talking, and I can see all the people who are on the call. I can see who's actually speaking at the moment, because we show you up on top. Um, and I can click on any of the guys to see more information about them. So like I click on Alex, I get all his profile info, I can pull up his LinkedIn profile. And the things that you'd normally be doing on a conference call, you know, like when you're on the phone, you know, I'd be browsing LinkedIn to try to figure out who these guys were that I was talking to. Yep. So basically we put it all online at, you know, so you can see it and take advantage of it just during the call itself. No, that's, that's really, really awesome and it uh, really helps you uh, do these conference calls. Is there any limitations on numbers of people that can be in a call or, yeah, or so can I do like a few to many or? Yeah, so currently we have two products. We have the free version, which we just came out of beta last week, but the free version starts with five, but if you link your social accounts and start your first conference and update your profile, you can earn as many as 17, which is pretty big and handles most conference calls. Yep. Um, but then we launched also a paid account, Uber Conference Pro, that is $10 a month, but you get to pick a local number and you can have up to 40 people on a call. Yep. And anytime beyond, like, it gets pretty out of hand when you have like exponentially greater numbers of people who can talk. Yeah. So we'll probably work on a larger group, but more of a presentation mode type thing where yeah. everyone's just muted and you well, can raise like your hand. What I'd like to do is uh, like a Gilmore gang where I have five people on the call and then a pump, uh, an audience that can listen to the call. Yeah, exactly right. And there, there's... Do you have the ability to do that by yeah. doing keyword, you know, passwords or something that, yeah. so that you get thrown into the uh, participant queue versus the, the listening queue? Yeah, we have some ideas on how we're going to do it, both through interactions on the web or through the phone. Um, so I don't want to give away all our secrets yeah. before we do it, but yeah, we do have some ideas on that. That would like uh, public companies do it for financial yeah, results exactly. and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, and you know, they pay an arm and a leg to have the moderator say, you know, the analyst from Nomura Securities has a question, whereas you could, that all should be animate, or should be automated. Yeah, well, they want to uh, pre-screen that yeah. so that you, well, they you know can, what the question is. I can pre-screen it, too. I mean, they, you can come up with ideas on how to do that. Yeah. So uh, how, what's happening? Uh, you guys won TechCrunch Disrupt with a, a, a year ago? Or? No, it was May, it was, it was May. just last yeah. May, so a little less Seems than. Seems like a year of yeah, internet time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a couple of years of internet time. Um, yeah, so we won. It was May 22nd we launched. We won on the 24th. Um, during that time, we've come out of beta. We launched our pro version. Um, we raised a $15 million Series B with Anderson as the lead. Google Ventures um, was our Series A lead, so they participated as well. Um, we started the company in Pleasanton. We're now moving to downtown San Francisco. Um, we're hiring like crazy, so any great software engineers out there want to come change the communication landscape with us, we'd love to see them. But yeah, so just kind of been like this massive trajectory of like, you know, get your beta out, you know, battle harden it, come out with, come out of beta, get your pro version, and then just kind of take off from there. So. I'm going to be interviewing Andreessen soon. What should I ask him? Um, ask him how much, <laughs> ask him how happy he is with his FireSpotter investment, because FireSpotter Labs is the company that, it was more of an incubator that launched Uber Conference. Yep. Um, but he's been great. I, they've been really wonderful to work with. Yep. We could spend a whole show yeah, on how yeah, to yeah. deal with the, 
raising money and stuff like that. We probably should at yeah. some point, <laughs> particularly, particularly with people who've raised from some of the better big VCs. Um, what else do I need to know about you guys? Because it's pretty yeah. straightforward. You call yeah, in and you get... It's, it's straightforward. The nice thing is, if you're looking here, like uh, other things we can do, an organizer can click on a guy and then have control of features. Like I can mute this person. I could actually kick him out of the conference. And we invented this other feature called earmuffs. So if I wanted him not to be able to hear what we're saying, I slap the earmuffs on him and then we can have a side conversation without him in there. So a lot of conferencing has these types of organizer controls and features, yep. but you can't, no one knows them because it's like star 75 to record the call, star 76 to turn it off. Yep. For us to record it, you just hit this red button here and yep. now the call's being recorded and you can download the MP3 at the end. Um, other things like a lot of times you're on a call, but you want to chat. So, hey there, you can chat to the whole group and send links and documents. Do you do any of this from the mobile phone or from the tablet? You will be able to very soon. Okay. Um, so, currently testing in, in alpha internally, um, and we'll have iPhone and Android out relatively soon. Yeah, a lot of times I, on conference calls, I'm sitting there with my iPhone yeah. and my iPad, you know, I, I'm sitting in a park somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I, well, that's the beauty, right? I mean, work used to be you're sitting in a conference room in a meeting, then it was in a conference room on a conference call. Now it's you know in a Starbucks parking lot, but you got your tablet up and you have your cell phone. So we're really focusing on how do we enable kind of like that next gen mobile worker who has these different screens. They have the laptop, they have the tablet, and they have the smartphone. Very and cool. building services for all those. Um, one last thing I'll show you is when the call ends, so I'm gonna hang up here and end it. Um, we also give you this cool summary of who all was on the call. I can rate the call, it tells me who spoke the most and who spoke the least. Um, and when I hit OK, that gets saved into my Evernote account as well. So now I have every conference oh, cool. ever in Evernote. And like now I can see the recording here. If I wanted to play it back, I could play back the recording of the call. So it really just kind of takes something that's, that's pretty difficult and there's no visual aspects to a normal conference call. It makes it super usable by bringing the web in. Can it. I can I schedule a call and can I have it call me instead of having me fill in that stupid yeah, so pin number? Yeah. Here's what I'm gonna do to say a new conference, and I'll say my friend Alex or Alex Cornell, who's our lead designer, and I'll add him. I can schedule it for later, right here, and I can pick any time. Let's say, say tomorrow or next week. I can make it recurring every week, and I can even make it dial out. So okay. when I hit that, now at that time, it's going to dial all of us. So you never have to even dial the number to begin. And it adds it to your calendar as well. And then it adds it to my calendar oh, as well. That's really awesome. Yeah. It's, hey, it's, Tiffany, are you going to use this stuff? My boss is over here. Tiffany, you better use it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, other thing to know is um, I used to run Google Voice. I had Grand Central before that that got acquired by Google to do yeah. it. So the team has you know decade of voice over IP and next gen communications and voice experience. So a lot of the challenges are, how do you tie like a really attractive visual, you know, web kind of appy design to like real old school telephony? And, and that's not easy to do. And making them work seamlessly and quick, like when I mute it here, it mutes there. It really takes, you know, a bunch of wonderful engineers who know what they're doing to be able to make that happen. So, so I think we got it. Sounds great, man. I, I right. want to use it with my boss. So. <laughs>